Um, you know, Len Bass likes to talk about when we get involved in these architecture engagements or like ATEMs, it's like you know, reading the middle three uh, chapters of a book. So you know, we're asked to come in, take a look at the architecture. You know, we haven't been there at the beginning and we go in and do our analysis and then uh, we, we provide um, our analysis and then leave and we don't always know uh, the end of the story. So uh, this presentation is our um, experience in trying to go back and, and look at some of those you know, final chapters. Although um, we've heard um, over the course of the conference that this notion of value is, is something uh, difficult. So in, in some cases, we actually had to uh, you know, help the people um, kind of think about you know, what, what those final chapters might look like. We were interested in um, how the program office and the uh, supplier uh, could um, communicate and how some of these artifacts could help them better control uh, the, the uh, cost and schedule. So a majority of them, 10 out of 12, you know, reported that it did provide an informed basis. But as you see on the next slide, um, kind of looking to the very end of the project and seeing, you know, did it in fact uh, have an effect on the cost? You know, there was a small number of programs that reported that it did. And I think this indicates that, you know, architecture certainly is a, is a necessary uh, condition, but not necessarily sufficient because once you have that architecture, you still need to make sure that the implementation conforms to that and there's so many other factors with respect to the process and the practices as well. They, they wanted to see kind of a greater, uh, they were comparing QW with a greater method, same story for ATAM, they were comparing it with a method that would also um, uncover those initial risks but then also do a more detailed analysis on those hot spots that ATAM would um, uncover. So if we just separate out from what they were currently doing, just those aspects that ATAM or QAW would do, and they agreed that it provided um, you know, as good or better quality than what they were doing now and that they would continue to use ATAM or QAW in the future. So we asked people, did, you know, did this help them kind of clarify requirements or architecture decisions or risks that either they currently knew, did it help them find something new that they didn't know before, did it help them kind of understand um, these things from an architecturally significant point of view. So overwhelming majority were, were um, uh, said that they uh, found improvements in this space. You know, based on this uh, analysis, you know, we'd heard anecdotes before, but this was the first, uh, you know, attempt to really come up with and think about the criteria and then think about some of the context that could affect that criteria and then ask the same questions to these different types of programs to see uh, what they thought was the, the value. It's important, you know, early on in the acquisition, you know, during the request for proposal and the statement of work, to think about what those architecture-centric practices should be. You know, what would you like um, a contractor? Um, um, you know, what expect, you know, good practices would you expect? And then where are some of the uh, decision points that the government, you know, would make sense to have oversight into that process? So I think the key here is that this proactive approach must be done you know, early on during the acquisition uh, planning and then monitored throughout the acquisition life cycle.